This is Cross Pollination. I'm Carrie Preston. And today I'm being interviewed by my partner, Tess Cruz, to introduce the channel. We made this video about a month and a half ago. And at the time I was planning on introducing everything on March 21st, the first day of spring, but then I the computer wasn't editing and it took some time. And so there's been some time between that interview and now. A lot of what I said and we said in that interview um, is the same, but a couple small things have changed. Um, at the time, I thought I was gonna make this both a YouTube channel and a podcast. And I've since decided, you know what, let's just stick to just YouTube, one place, one media outlet. Um, it's a little bit more, um, yeah, doable. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking for a Dutch word for that, for um, over Zichtelik. Um, but I figure, let me just focus on the one. If at some point um, there seems to be advantages to adding a podcast, we'll upload the audio separately. But for now, it's just on YouTube. Um, and also at the time I was planning on doing eight interviews in the first week to sort of make a grand finale. I'm not gonna do that now. Um, I'm going to today share this video as well as an interview with Chantal Van Marie, uh, a Belgian uh, woman who's a green manager of the city of Doma. And then I'm going to share every week on the Wednesday and the Friday, a different conversation. And on the Sundays, I think in the beginning, every other week, and then I'm gonna move that up to once a week, once I have more content, I'm going to share um, a book review, a webinar, a garden visit, or things that are just me sharing information that I have often with a lot of images and a lot about gardening and sustainability in different ways. Um, if there are topics that you're interested in, um, people you think we should talk to, feedback you wanna give in any way, please do. We're starting this out, it's trial and error for us. So help us improve it and keep it interesting for you and us and yeah, please join us. Hello, Carrie. Hi, Tess. This is Cross Pollination and I'm Tess and I'll be interviewing your presenter, Carrie Preston. Carrie, who are you? I am first and foremost a garden designer. Mm -hmm. I have been designing gardens since I was 14. And I think if I had to choose one thread throughout my entire life and my identity, that that would be it. That's, that's a lot of who I am. I started working at a nursery as a, as a teenager when I was 14 um, versus a part-time job to earn money to save for college. And I got completely hooked. And well, why, why did you get hooked? Um, I'm not exactly sure, like objectively, I don't know why I loved it so much. Um, but I think I grew up in a very wealthy area um, where I think a lot was about status and performing and achieving and working at this garden center and this farm where I was working felt like an antidote to a lot of that. And it felt very real and very tangible. And, um, and there was this very sort of, so I'm, I'm, you know, so Tess and I are partners, so we know each other very well. So Tess knows all these things. Um, and well, as you know, I, I'm very much an idea and in my head's kind of person. And I think there was something very anchoring about this very concrete, tangible thing the of gardening. Earth. earth, earthy. Literally. And um, I think also I was, I have a really good memory, which I think is also something that's going to help me in this channel and what I'm doing because I have a very good social memory. I remember everything about people. Like I went to my, my high school reunion and like I knew more about people's, what happened to them as kids than they remembered. Um, 
but I also have a really good memory for plants. And so I think it was just really fun that like I very easily remember plants and can tell them apart. And like, I became this as a teenager, this little encyclopedia of plant knowledge. And I think it felt really good to be highly competent at this thing that no one else knew. <laughs> and it sort of became my thing. Mm -hmm. And then um, I had always wanted to be a writer or be an artist. And um, when it came time to choose a study and go to, go to college, my parents were like, yeah, you gotta be really good at those things to, to do them. Um, and I think because they know that I can get kind of lost in things, I think they liked the idea of maybe landscape design and horticulture because it felt more practical, like there would be actual skills. Um, and it did feel like a very good marriage of, um, of art, of writing, and of these skills that I had. So I think that's why I loved it. And, um, and it's just, it's remained a passion of mine throughout my life. I, I, so I'm now, I'm 44 now. So that's another part. And I'm in Holland because I'm Dutch. Yes. Um, and so when I think I partially came to Holland um, because of plants, Holland is one of the best nursery areas um, in the world. I would say, I think in the United States, you have the area around Oregon, which grows a lot of plants. And in, Mo in Europe, you have a distinction because I think in Germany and in, in Belgium, you have a lot of trees and shrubs, but Holland is the foremost producer of perennial plants for, for millennia, even I would say um, the foremost producer of flowers and fruit trees started here. So it's, it's, and so I came to Holland because of this supreme horticulture and I stayed because it was like a wallaha of, of affordable plants and so, so <laughs> and I got kind of spoiled with just all these plants being so easily available. So that, yeah. Um, and so I guess that's another big part of who I am. I, and what did am, you learn here in Holland, Kerry, as a, as a garden designer? What would you say? Mm, yeah, okay. So I was gonna say about being American and Dutch and now we're thinking of France. Um, but so Holland is a very structured place. And I, in my origin, I'm not a very structured person. <laughs> I can. <laughs> Tess is a more structured person. Mm. And I think definitely young me really resisted structure, which is interesting that like the cheap and affordable plants was enough to keep me here because the structure in the beginning I found unnerving. Especially, I lived in the beginning in Flevoland, which is a new polder, man-made land, all of us man-made, but this is like new, and like the trees were in rows, and, and, and I just, I oh, had... The same. What? All the houses were the same. All the houses were the same, and everyone's like, oh, it's the unity, and I was like, oh my god, yeah, um, and I would say every centimeter of Holland, and I'm not exaggerating, has been thought about and planned like probably at least 10 times. Um, and that level of organization was really confronting for me, especially I think, so I think a lot of people view gardens as nature. And I think they just view landscape as nature and in Holland, if you think of nature as something that's wild and happened of itself, there is no nature. We have a lot of not biodiversity. We have a lot of outdoor space, but all of it is cultivated. It's a, a, a culture, cultural landscape. And, um, and gardens are innately about the relationship. <laughs> Pokemon, stop. Um, innately about the relationship between man and place. And Holland really freed me of the romanticism 
of nature um, and made me see like what we can do to create biodiversity, how we can enhance our, our environments to feel more natural, make hyper reality, make hyper nature. And it taught me both in gardens and as a human being to, I'm not gonna say embrace, but accept a certain level of structure. So how, how in your gardens, what happens there? Um, well, actually I would say my gardens at this point probably are like highly structured. Um, you love your lines. Yeah, I, I, I have, I learned to love to genuinely love lines and the tension between them and these like really bold architectural statements, which is a very Dutch aesthetic. And then contrast it with planting that evokes a feeling of wildness. I mean, again, it's not actually wild. Um, and I think that I, I've learned to appreciate that marriage of, of clarity in form and wildness in um in texture and mm -hmm. and you can marry it in different ways sometimes it's fun to to create a very organic form with um a sort of more subdued planting and just really play with that and i think a lot of what we appreciate in gardens and landscape design is playing with that line of when is it legible and when is it dynamic Mm -hmm. And because I, in my own personality, default so much towards the love of the dynamic, bringing in a, a bold clarity and making it very legible, I find to be a very good instrument to um, allow abundance. I, I've I found that the bolder your structure, the more room there is for variability and dynamic. It's very ironic. And actually, this is what Dutch culture has left, taught me that if basic life is really structured and like the trains run on time and like the houses are like, and like you don't have to worry about like basic survival of life because it's all structured and you know it's going to take care of, you can yeah. take bigger risks. Yeah. You can have more wildness and craziness within the lines if the lines are clear. Mm. Um, yeah. So are you bored with garden design that you have started this channel? This is cross pollination. Why cross pollination? This is cross um, yeah, I wouldn't say I'm bored with garden design. I think I'll always I, I'm not stopping with garden design. Um, <laughs> that's like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> come on. And there's um, a longer, and especially if we move to south of France. Yeah, I mean, a part of this idea came because we're planning to move to France. We, we could talk about why we're planning to move to France in, in a bit, because that's that's another story. Um, and that when we make this move, I'm not going to be able to sort of copy paste my business from here to there. So um, it's nice to have something that I'm doing that A, potentially could create some form of income, um, but B, can get my name out and elsewhere. Um, but I think also the last few years, I've been doing a lot of teaching workshops, lectures um, all over the world, a lot in Eastern Europe and Russia and the States. Um, and I really like exchanging knowledge. I really like finding out how people do things elsewhere. Um, I like sharing the knowledge that I have. Um, and I really love discussions and talking about why we're doing things and what motivates people. And so originally, because I was missing doing the workshops and stuff, we were talking about maybe I should start a school mm -hmm. and, and create structured courses. And, and, I, and I was sitting in that for months and I was like, yeah, I could do that. And yet I wasn't taking steps. And then I sort of wondered like, what do I want to do? Mm -hmm. And like what I want to do, people. what I want to what? You want to connect people. I want to connect people. I want to connect <laughs> with people. Um, I want to get all the ideas. <laughs> yes. 
I don't want to share all the ideas. Yes. I don't want to find out why people have the ideas. Um, I, yeah, so like, I think my favorite thing in the world is a good conversation about something that I'm passionate about. I know, I know. <laughs> and so this is like an excuse to do that a lot. <laughs> I know, yes. I'm glad I have my studio so I can escape from all that. But yeah, and yes. like, and I think that how cool is it now with the technology that we have that I can have these conversations and that maybe somebody else might learn something from them too and have an advantage that, of it as well. Because who's your audience and who are you, your people you are talking to? So I've been thinking about this a lot um, because obviously my interests and the people I know are garden heavy. Like there are gonna be a lot of plants people. There's gonna be a lot of horticulturists and garden designers and people working in planting and thinking about those things. Cause that's my world. Um, but I don't wanna limit it to that because I, I want the discussion to be more about sustainability in general, climate change, um, yes about gardening, but like all the things we can be doing to make the world a more resilient, more beautiful place. Um, and I want to present these conversations in a way that is not just interesting for the professional. I wanna make it accessible for anyone who's just interested in why people do things. Like, okay, this is this is gonna sound perhaps a bit ambitious and arrogant, but like there's, there's that, that channel on Facebook and whatever called Humans of New York and he like interviews these people and like he just makes their story interesting. And I think, um, I think everyone's story if told in an honest way where you're really understanding why are they doing this and who are they is mm -hmm. interesting. And so I wanna tell these stories so that yes, it's interesting for professionals so they can know more what other people in the industry are doing, but also that like, that you'd wanna listen to it or anyone who's just interested in why people are doing it. story. Yeah. A good story, yeah. A good idea, a good story, yeah. And 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 I want to find out, yes, um, what is someone doing and what is their work, and I think with some people, because of their personality, it's gonna like be very like focused just on their ideas. But I, I love to know like who is the person behind the work and why did you do this and how did you come here and what is motivating and like. How did it go wrong? <laughs> and what did you learn? And how did you make this happen? Um, because yeah, if we know how people, and I, I want it to be like, I'm, I'm very deliberately trying to find people everywhere in the world. Um, and so that like someone in America can find out what someone in Russia is doing and what, what someone in India is doing and someone in China and someone in, in France. And like, they were all, hearing each other's stories and being like, oh, in, in Belgium, they, they're dealing with weeds in their cities this way. Maybe we can do that in our city too, or um, so that we can all learn from each other. Mm. Yeah. And so you have started with your interviews because we are not the first one. No, no, I've been quietly doing a whole bunch of interviews. Mm -hmm. So um, we're going to share this one first. And it's interesting because when I start, I think I started the interviews in February. Yeah, February. I think so too. Well, you started reading that book of Ben yeah. a bit earlier. Yeah, yeah. We, we'll talk about Ben's interview in a bit. Um, that was one of the harder ones, ironically. Hmm. Um, so I started in February and I've been sort of pacing them out because I want to have time that like say I get busy, that I keep steadily sharing the interviews. Um, I'm hoping once I get over my technological, oh shit, sh I have to figure out the editing software freeze that I'm having right now. Um, <laughs> I will share um, eight interviews this week and that then I will share two interviews every week um, on the Wednesday and the Friday. And that on the Sunday, I will also share something, but that it'll be more a garden visit or a book report or a small webinar that. thing. So it's not gonna be just interviews, you're gonna expand. I think the interviews are gonna be the focus. 
Um, and definitely on the podcast, I think it might just be interviews. So it might, it might make a difference between the YouTube channel and the podcast. Because these are going to be on the YouTube channel. These are going to be on the YouTube channel. And then these interviews are going to be on the podcast as well. Um, but I, I think um, I will be sharing more on the YouTube channel. Um, so one of the other things that I want to do besides all these conversations that I want to be having and that's is these book reports because I I don't know about other people but I like to buy garden books and then like look at the pretty pictures and not always who doesn't <laughs> yeah and so this is a really good motivation to finally read a bunch of those books one of the things the I'm thinking, we already have we have a lot of them yeah yes I know yeah 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 <laughs> um and so it's a good way to read those books talk to the author of those books find out more yeah, about more them. books because there will be no more exactly <laughs> <laughs> there will be new books coming out so books are just like people that are not in the room mm -hmm. um yeah and i think um one of the things I'm playing with, but I won't be starting that right away because I want to just start on a steady schedule with the interviews and then like some other book report garden visit webinar thing um, is I'm thinking about maybe starting a sort of book club where once a month that we can discuss a book together so that other people read the books on their shelves and then maybe we can organize something the people that are part of that book club we, that we have a, a question and answer with the writer or something, but that's that's all like in a few months. We'll see how it goes. Um, one of the other things I'm playing with potentially for the future is creating um, maybe sort of panels or discussions that you have like a day where you have more people come and talk and then you exchange ideas. One of the things that I feel I'm good at um, or at least seems to happen. So on my Facebook page, which I have, I feel like a lot of discussion happens between other people on my Facebook page. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I feel like because, I'd like to think it's partially because of who I am mm -hmm. and the climate I create of both curiosity and discussion and openness to other people's ideas. And I would love for that same dialogue to happen on the YouTube channel and that um, both physically in the comments that people get into discussion also in these panels that we actually have a discussion together that we exchange ideas and also that if people are listening because of what I'm hoping is a very accessible style that I have these people will become real to each other and they'll be like oh that's a real human who I can reach out to and ask questions to or collaborate with. And that then they'll, that some of the people watching will approach some of the people that they're, that I'm, that are in the conversations and do their own thing. Yeah. Which yeah. would be awesome. That would be awesome, wouldn't it? Wouldn't that be awesome? You yeah. get to be the spider in the web. I, well, I get to be the pollinator. Yes, you get to be the pollinator. <laughs> This is cross pollination. Yeah, well, and, and you know, for years that my my username back when we had usernames in internet was the basic Kabai, which is the busy bee. Yes. So it's bringing back the busy bee. How appropriate is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's fun. Hmm. Um, yeah, what else? Well, you have had some interviews. Mm -hmm. What? Um, remember yeah what do you remember what what are the well you've have you interviewed any dutch people yet mm -hmm. and you have done a german late no belgium lady mm -hmm. i've done about 15 interviews now um pretty diverse i wanted to be a diverser it's been still pretty garden focused so i've reached out to a couple people that are more like scientists in other ways and architects in other ways artists Mm -hmm. Those still need to happen. And I'm going to, when I share them, I'm going to try and mix it up. Yeah. Um, what I just, um, so people's stories tend not to be very linear. 
Um, I think that might be a human thing. That might also be this industry. I think garden design, horticulture is for a lot of people second profession. So people have very sort of interesting how they got to this place stories. Um, I'm noticing that like people have very different motivations for each other to be doing what they're doing. So even if your goals are the same, the reasons behind it tend to be very different. Mm -hmm. um, Because we, we've, been, we've spoken in the past that in, uh, as, a, as a garden designer and you've met quite a few garden designers who had another uh, career before. What makes, yeah, well, we haven't spoken anything about, about your uh, audience yet, but who do you want to reach? Well, we talked about that, we did. Okay. Um, Just the ordinary person like me. You want it to be interesting. I mean, well, I want it to be interesting for gardeners as well. I want it to be, in, but I, I would like ideally for it to be interesting to anyone who's curious about other people and what they're doing and why, mm -hmm. and who's interested in sustainability and stories. Um, and who has a tolerance for long rambling conversations. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I remember a couple of those, yeah. Yeah, well, and I don't, yeah. So I don't know how much you'd be the audience test because it's not going to be a how-to show. So like you, when you watch like YouTube stuff, you definitely go for the how-to. You're like watching these programs where they're like teaching you literally how to make something. And you're like, oh, let me follow all the steps. Mm -hmm. And I feel like on YouTube, actually a lot of the gardening channels are very how-to. Um, so there's there's like Brie Author like showing you how to like grow seeds and there's um, I know, a bunch of people like growing vegetables and showing you how to do that and very practical. I'm not a real how-to gardener. No. I'm a real why gardener. And so I guess it's mostly a channel for people who are interested in hearing the why behind things. Because mm -hmm. that's what I'm really interested in and good at. And, um, and what I think I'm also like really good at is, so I'm pretty good at coming up with ideas, but what I think I'm more, I'm not like an a deep original thinker. So like there's like Peter Korn up in, up in Sweden, like he's like got these deeply original ideas that I think he spent like descending of like mining. I don't think I'm deeply original like that. I'm more associative and more of the synthesizer. And so like what I'm really good at, like is hearing someone else's story and synthesizing it really quickly and making it accessible. Mm. Um, and, and that's what I think I'm going to be doing with the book reports. Like, I think I can take like a really dense book, understand it and simplify it and bring it to people. This is why I was originally thinking teaching. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so in a way it will be, I think I'm really good at making um, meaty, dense information accessible in bite-sized pieces. Yeah. That's why it took you a while to get through Ben's book. <sighs> Who's Ben? Well, no, what, Ben's book, yeah, actually it's good that we're talking about this because I've been debating making a whole other video about his book, which I still might. But, um, so Ben. Who's Ben? Ben who Ben, ben Fote, who I love as a human being, um, wrote a book about the New Garden ethic, um, which you're right, it took me a while to read through, but I, I think it was partially because it was dense in ideas. Um, and that got you written. thinking. So but that, I think also, what? Well, those dense ideas got you thinking and sidetracked a little bit. And Yeah, but also very confrontational for me. Um, I think because I was thinking about this and this is one of the things I thought about talking about is I'm a very people focused person. So mm -hmm. I think in garden design, you have people who like, um, are mostly into the aesthetic and materials and the space. And I love the space, but in service of people. Mm -hmm. And then you have the people who are really into the plants and the biodiversity and their motivations very much that that's Ben is about that. Um, and I am, but I'm, I'm very in service of people. Like, cause I feel like a garden is a relationship yeah. between. And so like all of my designs are figuring out who's my client, 
who are they? How do they tick? How do they want to live? It's all about people. And this too, like, <laughs> I'm not talking about gardens. I'm talking about the people who are gardening. Um, and yeah, and so Ben's book was a lot in a way about saying like, it, sh it shouldn't be about people. It should be about the other species. And I agree with him. Like we should totally be um, finding other species superhuman. I mean, super important in our designs. But because I'm so human focused, that was taking me some some time to to mm -hmm. absorb. Um, Can you tell us who else you've spoken to? Um, so who who are we going to look forward to this week, for example? Mm -hmm. um, well, you mentioned Belgian. I, I spoke to Chantal Henry who is the green manager of the city of Doma, which is um, right outside of uh, Bruges in Belgium. Um, really, really interesting talk. I think, I think one of the most interesting ones for me. I talked to um, Riz Ries in um, Seattle, who works at McMinimins, which is um, this really great concept of taking I would say like old infrastructure of strip malls and schools with these huge parking lots and making them into sort of wellness lifestyle places and adding amazing gardens and just a very deeply empathetic, thoughtful human being. Um, really nice guy. You're a really nice guy. Mm -hmm. um, I talked to, I'm going to butcher her last name, Anna Andrevzeva. <laughs> Um, sorry, Anna. Um, I, I'll practice that before <laughs> your video. Who um, is a Russian woman um, doing a PhD at Sheffield? Very interested in um, plant communities and studying plants in Siberia and how they can be applied um, to rooftops and plantings um, elsewhere. Mm -hmm. I spoke to Sonia Harris, who is um, been a, um, a special eds teacher for 25 years and is yeah, now creating please. community gardens for schools in New Jersey. New Jersey. Um, I spoke to Naomi Brooks, who helps make ideas reality and is really great at planning and figuring out all the logistics of making those designs happen. Mm -hmm. I talked to what, Raza, another last name that I can't pronounce from, <laughs> from Lithuania, who um, her career has skyrocketed the last few years. Um, and from going from being mostly a nursery woman who does garden, um, who does some planting and garden design, being actually a planting designer who has a nursery. Um, yeah, who else have I talked to? Um, You've talking, spoken to uh, Nicholas? Nicholas Tomlin. And we have to do a follow-up because we like basically talked about the history of gardens in France. Well, you know, Nicholas and I, when we get together, are like, we'll stay up to <gasps> late talking about everything yes. garden related. So our conversation was a lot like that. Mm. Um, I talked to Austin Ice Guide about um, all the exciting he stuff he's doing and his trajectory is his career and the importance of mentorship and all the different experiences he's been a having. A lot to look forward to. A lot to look forward to, yeah. Um, lots of really good conversations. Um, and I have a bunch more planned. So it's, it's, it's kind of like a candy store for me. It's like even better than cheap plants. It really is. Because <laughs> I get to talk to interesting people. And, and what I've discovered too is like people will like send you their books so you can read it and then you can talk about their book, which how fun is that? <laughs> so I'm going to be talking to Miriam Goldberg soon about her book, uh, Taming Wildflowers. And um, I've got Carrie Norris's book. I'm going to be interviewing him soon. Um, yeah, so lots of, lots of good stuff. Um, what else do you want people to know when they listen to our interview? Well, I think I think you already can sense from the tone of this conversation, which is probably even more rambling because I'm speaking a lot more. Yes. Um, 
I'm trying to I'm trying to guide us in a direction that's not really working. No, no. no. <laughs> As usual. <laughs> yeah, that I well, I think when I'm interviewing someone else, it might be a little more structured. Um, but I don't want it to be too structured. I want the conversations to go where they're gonna go. Yeah. Um, like real conversations do. Yes. And that that organic quality happens and it's not going to be too formal and it's not going to be too licked because that's not who we are it's, yeah I'm, I'm i'm really terrible at formal and polished so i'm not even going to attempt it um but that but what i am really good at is like getting to the heart of things mm. um and so that i really hope we do um and what i also like i know a lot of people from everywhere in the world. Yes, and do you, you do remember people and what makes them tick. Yeah, well, and I think I was talking about that briefly in the beginning that I have like a huge social memory. So you have these people who are like, oh, I don't remember faces and I don't remember names. Mm -hmm. I'm the exact opposite of that. If yes. we had a conversation 20 years ago and you told me about your mother and her favorite cup of tea, like I will remember everything. <laughs> so, <laughs> and like. So like, I not only remember your face and your name, but like, I know your favorite color and like <laughs> what, why you did that trip to your school. Like, I remember those things yeah. and, um, and, I, and I love those things yes. because I think that's what makes us human and interesting. Uh, and and I, I rely on those things. <laughs> you do. I, mean, I don't have to remember them. You can tell me what did I order last time and I'll order it again. That's true. We'll go to a restaurant and I'll know what you had and you won't know. <laughs> yes. So why are we going to France and why to the south of France? Oh, why are we going to France? Well, that's actually maybe a question you can answer. Um, well, I know why I want to go to France. I, with me and my hobbies, I need space. And yeah. while living in Arnhem ticks a hell of a lot of boxes, it doesn't tick my box of having outbuildings and having my letter studio. Yeah, well, I think we don't have a garden. Out. We have a communal garden behind our house, which was great with our pug being a puppy. But yeah. you a real guy. Well, I mean, Arnhem's been wonderful. And Holland's been wonderful. Um, and we learned and Holland's that we a to very learn. urban country. Yes. And we are not infinitely wealthy people. So if we want to have a bit of space to have a big rambling garden and a big barn where you can do all your all your crafty stuff. Yes. That's very hard for us to realize in a comfortable way in Holland. So a big reason to go is so we can have more space. Um, I think another- a house, we, we don't need more house to clean, but all the rest is important. Okay, just a tiny little, yeah. Um, and I think also, I think I've learned the lessons from Holland that I mostly needed to learn. I have embraced enough structure for a lifetime. <laughs> so now, now I want to go back to a little more wildness mm -hmm. and the area of France we're looking at will have hills and mountains and wildflowers. And that sounds fantastic. The and it's near the Pyrenees. It's, well, it's near the Pyrenees. Um, it's near my very good friend, Nora. That sounds wonderful too. Mm -hmm. um, so what, what, what do you hope to realize uh, garden-wise in the south of France? Well, I think something that I like to do... We want to have a lot of people... garden. We, we, we want to be a little bit self-proficient. Yeah, a little bit self-sufficient. Not fully. Mm -hmm. I mean, we could be. I, I, I mean, back in my 20s, I grew every like organic vegetable, self-sustaining, whatever. I, I don't, until the world collapses, I don't need to do that yet. Um, I think it's partially just leaving my comfort zone. Um, new climate, new culture, new plants to an extent. New we'll language. Home. New language. I like new. I like doing things that scare me. 
I don't know if you actively like those things as much, but I think the bar. I, I just go with the flow. You know how I am. <laughs> I just go with the flow. <laughs> and as long as I have my things, my wine, my coffee, my your crafts, routine, your crafts, yeah. you'll be good. Yeah. Yes. Well, and I think um, I I'm excited to have bigger spaces to work in. I think the magic that I've learned about space and structure here will space. translate to a larger landscape in exciting ways. New materials. Um, yeah, new plants. And, and then to really like be able to garden as a lifestyle, um, mm. which we can't do here because we just don't have the space. No. Um, and we're, we're young enough now to really go into it gung-ho. So that'll be fun. Oh, and what we plan on having besides the place for you to do crafts, if we plan on having like huge workout space so that people can come and you know, teach and learn and do workshops that we're either giving, but other people are giving. So that can kind of be an extension of this. Yeah. Yeah. This is a long rambling story. <laughs> I lost you there for a second. I think we covered most of it, don't you? We agree? did. We did. And maybe we'll make a more orderly one in, in maybe, maybe. So I'm planning on doing um, seasons, literal seasons. So like there will be spring of 2021 and then summer of 2021. That's, I'm going to break it up a little bit that way. Also with the, the panel idea, I'm thinking about having like seasonal ones. Um, and so maybe we should do a short recap, perhaps not as long as this, once, yeah, once every season. I agree. Yeah, it'll be like, what are you doing, Carrie? Why are you doing this now? Yes. <laughs> and, then we'll, and then we'll maybe make it more of a conversation because we'll talk about what you're doing as well. Because this is more introducing the channel and I didn't let you talk at all. I was just like, this is an interview. This is all about me. <laughs> you're true, Carly, and I can't hear you. Starting this is cross pollination, so people need to know who you are. I know who you are, but other people might not, and it's going to be fun. I'll look forward to it. And for now, I say thank you. Okay, thank you. Love and you. I'm coming home soon. All right, <laughs> see you a bit. All right, see you in bye. A bit. bye. Bye. Like I said in the introduction, let us know if there are people you want us to talk to, topics you want to hear about, subscribe to the channel, like it, leave comments, give some feedback, and um, yeah, keep us making this more interesting, uh, both for us and you, and um, thanks for listening. <laughs>